Hi and welcome to another basic Blowfield tutorial. In the first tutorial we saw how to use the Blowfield in general and where you can find the menu pages. The second video was about multi-mode and how to play single sounds and multi-sounds and how to program the multi-mode. And in this video and in the next ones we are going to discuss the sound editing in greater detail. This time I start with the oscillators. So we have some initial sound here and we are in the play mode. If you want to switch into the editing mode you have to press one of these four buttons here. The first one is for the oscillators. So I press it and you can see the settings for oscillator 1. When this light is on, you can control the parameters shape, semitone, detune and level for oscillator 1 by using these four knobs. So with this one you can change the shape. This one is for the semitone. This one is for the detune, and this one is for the level. If you want to control the parameters for oscillator 2, just press the button once again, and you can see the settings for oscillator 2, and for oscillator 3, it is the same. Okay, so let's take a look on the shape parameter. The shape is the waveform of the oscillator. The Blofeld has really a lot of different waveforms or oscillator models or whatever you want to call it. Okay, we can start with the, the most left one, which is off. This is uh, some surprise because you could think that if you want to turn off the oscillator you can also use the level. But there's one problem. If you have some oscillator with a waveform and you just turn off the level, the processor still computes the data of this oscillator. So if you don't use oscillator 1 for instance, you have to choose the shape off to turn off the oscillator completely and then the Blofeld has more processing power um, to compute other things. So you have an increased polyphony, more voices and um, more possibilities. So th this is one trick. And um, the first uh, waveforms are square, sawtooth, triangle, sine. Yeah, so the basic classic analog waveforms. Then the next ones are wavetable alt 1. and ALT2. Two. These two wavetables wave are from the world of Q synthesizers. Then we have wavetable 1. Two.
to 30. Wave tables 1 to 30 are from the PPG era, which uh, started the use of uh, wave tables and which was then later um, also used by Waldorf. And the next wave tables are from the microwave and micro microwave 2 uh, synthesizers. Except for this last one. Wave table 66, Upper Waves, is um, also from the PPG wave synthesizer. It is hard to explain where this wave table was used. If you're more interested in this, just watch my um, low field toward microwave video. And in this one, I explain it in, uh, in more detail. But for this basic tutorial, this is just enough information for you. Okay, the next wave tables are reserved for some reason. They are not used, there's no sound, and um, you can also um, not load um, your own wave tables in this position. Then from wave table 80, you have the user wavetable slots and with some um, other programs from the internet you can load your own you can create your own wavetables and load them into the blowfield but um, these programs are not from Waldo they are programmed by um, other people somewhere on the internet and it's rather complicated to create wavetables and to load them into the blowfield so I won't discuss it in this tutorial. So you will have only something like user wavetable in these um, wavetable slots. And you have, if you have your um, sampling license activated or if you use the Blowfield keyboard, you can also load samples with um, some programming from Waldorf into your Blowfield, which is also rather complicated. Maybe I will um, explain it in a different video, but not this time. Just for your information, if you have a sampling license or if you use the Blowfield keyboard, you have the possibility to use um, sampling. Like this.
Okay, so now let's take a look on the parameters you can access in the menu pages. For oscillator 1, you have 6 pages. Of course, on the first page you can choose the octave. Down to very low. And up to very high. The second parameter is balance. With this parameter you can um, say how the output of the oscillator is routed to your two filters. So filter 164 means that 100% of um, the output is routed to filter 1. The middle position says that the output is routed 50-50 to filter 1 and filter 2. And of course you can also routed just to filter 2. And of course you can modulate this um, parameter in your modulation matrix. Okay, the second page. The second page is about pulse width and pulse width modulation. You can choose the source of the modulation on the third page. In this case it is LFO1, but you can also choose other modulation sources. Also remember that um, this modulation is additionally available um, together with the modulations you have in the matrix. So you have your 16 modulation slots in the matrix and on top of that additionally you have some modulation possibilities in the menu pages. So finally you can create more than just 16 modulations in one patch. Let's try some pulse of modulation here with oscillator 1. Okay. These two parameters, limit, wavetable and brilliance, are mainly for the wavetable, so I will explain that later. The fifth page. Frequency modulation. You can modulate the frequency of oscillator two, uh, oscillator one by different um, sources, the LFOs, envelopes and oscillators, and for instance noise, by modulating um, the frequency um, with the noise, you can create some very dirty results like this. Just one trick here. And the last page is about key track and pitch band range. The key track parameter says um, what key produce, uh, which key produces uh, which pitch. So um, with one hundred percent, you can just play the oscillator normally with your keyboard. With 0% every key produces the same pitch.
you can choose zero percent for instance when you create um, drum sounds or other sounds which have to be the same for every key and of course the pitch band range says um, how much the pitch goes up and down when you use your um, pitch wheel so two is two semitones and for instance 12 is one octave and 24 are two octaves Okay, not a big surprise, for Oscillator 2 you have almost the same menu pages. Just note the fact that I jumped from Oscillator 1 to Oscillator 2 by choosing the next page, but um, the selection here hasn't changed. So even if you are on the menu page of Oscillator 2, you access the parameters of os Oscillator 1 when the first lamp is on. Okay, Oscillator 2 has got also the octave range and uh, the, the filter balancing. This is new. Oscillator 2 can um, be synchronized to Oscillator 3 with this parameter. On the third page, again, pulse width and pulse width modulation amount, which is also on the fourth page. But here you can um, choose your uh, modulation source. Again, parameters for your wavetables. Again, filter modulation. And again, key track and pitch band range. And this is oscillator 3. Oscillator 3 has got um, the octave position, the balancing, pulse width. Modulation has got only brilliance and no um, limit wavetable parameter and this can be a surprise but oscillator 3 has got no wavetables. So oscillator 3 is somehow just um, a better sub oscillator. Oscillator 3 has got only the classic analog style waveforms. No wavetables and no sampling. So the brilliance parameter has got a little effect also on the analog style waveforms, but um, it's very hard to hear the difference. And oscillator 3 can be um, frequency modulated again by the known sources. And there's also key track and pitch band range. You can access even more uh, menu pages for the oscillators. Beyond the pages for oscillator 3, there are the oscillator common pages. Here you can see an overview on all um, oscillators, the ring modulation and the noise. So every um, sound source is noted in this matrix, where you can see also the balancing for every source between filter 1 and filter 2. And here you can change the polyphony between poly and monophonic. The next page has the unisono parameters. You can um, overlay two voices, three, up to six. 
and here you can set the detune. So maybe you can hear the result. This is quite boring because we have no detune, but when we start the detune, it gets more interesting. Okay, the third page has the glide parameters. and the mode of the glide. Here it's portamento. This says that um, the pitch changes continuously from one played note to the next played note. Finger portamento means that it is still um, gliding from one note to another, but you have to keep the first note pressed while you play the second note. When you play the notes with a gap between, there's no portamento, just like this. And there are more notes, uh, modes. There's a glissando. This means that the pitch is not moving continuously, but moving from one note to another. So you hear the steps between. And there's also a fingered glissando. So fingered means there's no glide when you are, um, you hit every key with a pause um, between the the previous one and the current one. And here you can set some pitch modulation with a source and an amount. And now we have the settings for the ring modulation. As you can see here on the display, the ring modulation has the sources oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. And you can set the level and also the balancing. As you can see here, this little sign changes. And we have the noise. When I turn off oscillator 1, I can show how the noise is. And you can set some color for this noise. It's some kind of filter. And this was the last page for the oscillators and the sound sources. Okay, so here we go for the last part of this video, the wavetables. Again, if you want to know more about uh, wavetables and uh, which table was used in which device and so on, um, just watch my Blofeld toward microwave video, there I explain 
the wavetables in um, in detail and a bit of the history and so on. So just the basic information for you here. Let's use wavetable one resonance. A wavetable is more or less um, a whole bunch of um, similar waveforms which are stored together in one oscillator model. And you can hear one waveform at one time. If you want a different waveform from this wavetable, you have to use the pulse width um, parameter. This is a bit confusing because the pulse width parameters also for the pulse width of your um, pulse wave. So this parameter has two different meanings um, depending on which oscillator you're using. If, you, if you're using a oscillator with square as waveform, the pulse width is just a normal pulse width. And if you are using um, a wavetable in an oscillator, this parameter has a different meaning. So let's scroll through the wavetable by using this parameter. And this works for every wavetable. For instance, uh, wavetable 14. Or the very first wavetables, ORT1 and ORT2. And the in interesting thing is that you can um, still modulate this parameter, for instance, by using LFO1. Let's, let's try some different wavetables. And there are some funny wavetables like, um, let's say. One, two, three, four, five. Or nineteen twenty. Of course, when you play the blowfield, you don't uh, turn this knob again and again. So you're using modulation to make your sound more vivid. You can use, for instance, the filter envelope. So the modulation is um, added to um, this value. 
So you have to change this value just like uh, just as you need it. Okay, so um, there is just one more parameter, which is this one here. Oh, sorry, it's it's also brilliance. Let's say, let's start with brilliance. It's some kind of filter. So maybe you hear the difference. It seems to be some kind of low pass filter. And limit wavetable um, describes the behavior of the of the wavetable. Normally every wavetable has um, three or four um, wavetables at the end which are always the same. I think it's sine, triangle, saw and square or something like that. And um, this parameter describes if these last waveforms in your wavetable are blocked and can't be accessed. This is when this parameter is on. Or if you can access these last waveforms. This is when you turn off the limit. It's a bit complicated. Let's turn off the modulation. When you have your limitation on, the last waveform is this one. When you turn off the limitation, the last values are these ones. So, to sign. Square, so, and this is the case for every wavetable, but normally you don't want to access these last um, entries in the wavetable, so you turn on the limitation. Okay, that's all. This is all I can say about the oscillators. Of course, in the next video, I will explain the filters. Okay, so um, if you have some questions, if you want to say something, just write it in the comments. You can um, make a like or dislike. If you make a dislike, just please describe why you didn't like this video or what I can improve. And, well, thanks for watching and have a nice day.